chapter 17. Now, don't, don't forget now, uh, the service tonight, come back praying. We had a time last Sunday night in here. Uh, Sunday, Sunday morning just gets us ready for Sunday night. So be back tonight, 6 o'clock. Come praying, bring somebody with you. And I've got a, um, I think I've got a message on my heart. If the Lord don't change my mind, that everybody here would benefit from. Be well worth your time. And enjoy the singing and get a blessing here this evening at 6 p.m. All right, uh, in Luke chapter 17, there's a story here that uh, the Lord told. And um, many times he spoke in parables. And sometimes he told stories about real things that real people really did happen. And either way, he's teaching us something. Now, I want us to look here at this story um, in the Bible. Look at verse 11. uh, Luke chapter 17 and verse number 11. Please look at your Bible. If somebody beside you don't have one, share yours with them. And it came to pass as he went to Jerusalem that he passed through the midst of Samaria and Galilee. And as he entered into a certain village, there met him ten men that were lepers which stood afar off. Now hold your finger there just a second. Lepers meant they had leprosy. That, and there's a lot in the Old Testament about leprosy, uh, the disease. It is so bad, it is a picture of sin. And there was no cure for it. I think back in 30, 40 years ago, they got some kind of vaccine for certain kinds of it. But back in those days, there were no cure for leprosy. Now, uh, that time they had to stay outside. They were so contagious, they couldn't even be around everybody. Like, like this, was, this was a little town, the people of leprosy would have to stay outside because they'd infect everybody and everybody would die. So that's why they were afar off and outside the city. Now look what happened. Verse 13, and they lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. And when he saw them, he said unto them, go show yourselves unto the priest. That's what they did in the Old Testament. They would bring an offering, they'd have to bring it and show it to the priest, and they'd pronounce them clean or unclean. If you know this, if you read Leviticus and you read Numbers, you remember when they had lepers, thought they had leprosy, then they would have to go to the priest and he'd pronounce them clean, they'd have to do this and that and wait 10 days. You read your Old Testament, you know what he's talking about. Go show yourself to the priest and it came to pass that as they went, they were cleansed. A miracle happened. And one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back and with a loud voice glorified God. That means he started shouting. And he fell on his face at his feet, the feet of the Lord Jesus, giving him thanks. Amen. There's a thanksgiving here. Right. And he was a Samaritan. He wasn't even Jew. That's right. And buddy, that old boy got healed and he fell down at the feet of Jesus and shouted and started giving him thanks. And Jesus answering said, were there not 10 cleansed? But where are the nine? They are not found that return to give glory to God, save this stranger. And he said unto him, arise, go thy way, thy faith hath made thee whole. Now, look at that. The Lord looked around. You know, a lot of times, uh, a lot of times we'll come to church and maybe the uh, a crowd will be down, attendance low, it happens in most churches, and some other crowd will say, man, where's everybody at? That's the only time in the Bible where I found Jesus did that. He looked around, he said, we had 10 here a while ago, and you're the only one come back to thank me? Where are the nine? Where's everybody at? The Lord said, why ain't they all here? And that one stranger got help from the Lord because he came back and praised him and thanked him for what he had done. And those nine, I don't know whatever happened to them, but I'm gonna preach about them this morning. I'm gonna preach on the subject, where are the nine? Where are the nine? That's what Jesus said. Jesus looked at that guy and he said, where are the nine? Where are the nine? Didn't I, didn't I touch 10 of you guys and only one came back to thank me? Where are the nine? This is a Thanksgiving story for sure. All of them were cleansed and one of them came back 
and thank the Lord. One out of 10, my, my. Uh, uh, 100% got healed, 10% were thankful. Isn't that something? Uh, uh, this story this morning uh, involves these 10 lepers. Now, uh, they, everybody's got something to be thankful for. I got one old woman at Thanksgiving, she said, she said she didn't have but two teeth, but she thanked God they met. And that's good. Uh, she was finding out, out something to be thankful for. I told him the other night, they said, if you can't be thankful for nothing, thank God you're not a turkey this week. That's right. Uh, you can, you've all got a lot to be thankful for, don't you? You sure do. Thank the Lord for it. Amen. Now, uh, these people here, they had leprosy. Let me talk just by way of introduction about leprosy. In the Old Testament, um, an, a, uh, a, a leper... When you got leprosy, it was a skin disease, got some kind of a, a bacteria and would affect the nerve system and the skin. It would start by breaking out on, on, a lot of times on your face, around your eyes, big sores, and would spread throughout the body. As it got worse, your, your, your fingers and stuff would go numb. It would affect the nervous system where you wouldn't have any feeling even in your nose, your tongue. They said that uh, a leper, all, all their hair would fall out, all their hair, not talking about just on your head, eyebrows, eyelashes, any hair on your, your arms or body, all the hair would fall off. And then teeth, their teeth and gums would just, would just rot away, not just teeth, the gums. And they, they would look horrible, they'd look horrible. They, you know, you hear about leper colonies where they would all be together. And they wasn't trying to be mean or nothing by putting them on the outside of the city. They, wasn't, uh, uh, they didn't have lawyers to demand the rights, come in and infect everybody else. They said, look, we love you. We're not trying to be mean, but you're gonna have to stay out there or, or everybody's gonna get it and our kids are gonna die and everybody. So they put them outside the gate. That's where they had to stay. And they, and they stayed out there. And when anybody came, they, they were required to, cl- to cry, unclean, unclean. They said their fingers or their, their fingers would gradually just rot and rot where they just have nubs like that. Now, can you imagine somebody with no teeth, uh, no hair, uh, sores all over them, no fingers, jumping around saying, Hung. I mean, you come into the town, buddy. I mean, that would give you, it'd be like a, a horror movie. Man, seeing them guys jumping around out there saying, unclean, unclean. And they said a rat could gnaw their finger off at night and they wouldn't even know it, wouldn't even feel it because the feeling was gone, horrible, horrible. And leprosy was a picture of sin that absolutely ruins people's life. And they come to the Lord that day and 10 of them came up there and they said, Jesus, we heard you can do anything. Have mercy on us. And he said, I'll tell you what you do. You go down there to the temple uh, where, where they always give the sacrifice and tell the priest uh, what you're doing and offer the gift, you know, you're supposed to do stuff like that. And while he's going down through there, one of them said, Good not. I felt, oh my goodness. And his hand was clear and didn't have, I mean, he, they thought, Lord, I had gold bond ultimate and everything else rubbing on me and it didn't do nothing. I had ac- acne medicine and I, I went to the dermatologist and it didn't do me a bit of good. And look at that. My skin is clear just like a little baby's. And they went, Woo! And nine of them took off running out through the countryside and one of them came back and said, I want to thank you, Lord. Thank you. I'm going to name that guy Thankful. That's his name, okay? We don't know his real name in the Bible, so I'm going to call him Thankful. One man, his name is Mr. Thankful. And Mr. Thankful said, Lord, uh, I want to thank you. And the Lord said, where's them, where's them other guys at? Where's them nine? And Thankful said, uh, you know, I don't know, but uh, and you want me to go visit them? Did they fill out a visitor's card? And the Lord said, no, they wasn't here long enough. And by the time I healed them, they had done and gone. And nobody's seen them since. And Thankful said, I'll go find out. So Mr. Thankful goes down through here and he goes down this street and he goes down that street and he is hunting that nine people that did not come back and thank the Lord. He sure was. And so like, uh, 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 he goes to the first man's house and knocks on his door and this man is named Lazy. Uh, for a, lack of a better word, I'm gonna call him Mr. Lazy. It got up on his name, home of the lazy, you know, uh, three, two, four, one, uh, 
uh, Lazy Street, uh, that Easy Street uh, that he lived on, and Mr. Lazy opened the door, and and thankful said, you know, the Lord wants to know where y'all are at. I'm the only one who went back and thanked him. We missed you at church Sunday. Where was you? And Lazy looked back at him and he said, you know, man, I'm telling you, I was so tired. I worked all week long. You, you got to understand, Mr. Goody Goody Two Shoes Thankful, that uh, I, I work for a living. I work hard. And I mean, I was so tired Sunday morning. I, I just, I, I just, you know, and, and he said, but you know, you cleanse now and you got skin like a little baby and you used to be a leopard. And he said, that's another thing. It feels so good to sleep in these sheets and they're clean and ain't got old junk on them. Puss and junk running out of my sores and, and blood and Lord, no telling what. And he said, it just felt so good. I, I just didn't want to get out. I just stayed home and meditated on St. Mattress. That's what I done. And, and he said, well, Jesus is wanting to know where you're at. And he said, well, I, man, I'm tired, man. I mean, I mean, good night. You don't, I, I just felt so good. I'm, uh, it's my only day to sleep in. And he said, well, why wouldn't you know? He said, my clock didn't go off. And he said, if I had a dollar for every time I'd heard that, I'd be rich. How come you clock, how come, you know, I know people, their clock goes off Monday, their clock goes off Tuesday, their clock goes off, and every, where's your head? My clock didn't go off. I mean, look, you ought to be able to get up and make it to church by 10 o'clock if you ain't even got a clock. Amen. And if your alarm clock goes off, uh, goes off Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, and it don't go off Sunday, you you are either lying or you got a demon in your house or in your clock and you need to call an exorcist to come over there and cast it out. You know why a lot of times people's clock don't go off? They didn't set it on purpose. It's laying there with their eyes that open watching the TV at one o'clock in the morning and some said, now you got church in the morning and they said, well, I, I know, but I, I'll get up and set the clock in a little bit. Yeah, you, I know why your clock didn't go off. Uh, you stayed up all night and didn't want your clock to get up. I'm telling you, he was Mr. Lazy. The only exercise some people get is running down their neighbor, pushing their luck, and jumping to conclusion. That's right, brother. Hardest thing they do all day is breathe and chew, and that's about it. Wears them out. I mean, if they won the national award for being uh, lazy, they'd send somebody else to go get their trophy. I'm telling you, he just would not get out of bed and get up and come and thank the Lord for what he'd done for him. He said, all right, I'm looking for you. He went on down the street. Where are the nine? He come to another fellow's house. His name was Family Friend. He's all about his family. He said, look, man, we had, we, I went back and thanked Jesus. Where was you? We missed you. He said, well, um, he said, uh, I had to stay with mama. You know, mama's sick, and, and I had to stay with her. And, and he said, well, you, I just, you just come out of the fleet market. Who stayed with mama while you was at the fleet market? Well, I left her a little while. I'm speaking from personal experience when I'm rattling this stuff off to y'all. I have seen people at the flea market. You been go, where was you behind to be in the church? I have to stay home and take care of mama. She's sick. Who's got mama right now? And they look at you like they'd seen Dracula fall out of the sky on her or something like that. I mean, that's, they think we're really that dumb that we believe that. And, and it's, don't, I'd be ashamed and scared to blame my sick mama for me too sorry to come to church on Sunday. Really? Now, I mean, if your mama really is sick and she has to, I understand that, I ain't stupid. But you know what? People just use it as an excuse. You had to stay with mama, whatever. Uh, you was glad you stayed with mama. But you didn't stay with mama when the kid had a ball game on Saturday evening. Uh, you didn't stay with mama when it come time for you to get up and go to work. I'm not saying it's wrong to stay with somebody that's really sick. Don't get me wrong. But that guy, uh, uh, well, uh, what was you doing that? Well, you know, last Sunday, my aunt had surgery and, and uh, you know, my aunt had surgery. Then 
didn't go see her, uh, but it didn't come to church. Uh, where was you Wednesday night? My daughter had a ball game. My daughter had a ball game uh, Wednesday night, and, and we should support our children. And I, I believe in supporting my children. And I said, well, what do you believe about taking your kids to church and honoring Jesus Christ that kept you out of leprosy from dying? What do you think about that? I'm telling you, where are the nine? Where are the nine? Where are the nine? Are you one of them? I tell you, that old boy, uh, he, he said, uh, uh, where was you uh, the last Wednesday night? And he said, well, it was Wednesday before Thanksgiving and I had to cook that turkey and I just had so much to do. The family was coming over and I stayed home Wednesday night to cook that turkey. And, and thankful said, why do you cook turkey? Because the next day's uh, special day. We're so thankful that we lay out of church and don't even thank the Lord where it all come from, people. Where are the nine? Where are the nine? Some of you are feeling real uncomfortable right now. Well, you're, here, you're sitting there saying, well, I'm doing pretty good. Why is he fussing at me? Because you're so crazy. You're doing pretty good. No, you're not. <laughs> no, you're not. Where are the nine? Our generation thinks, they say only in America, Black Friday, only in America, if we have Black Friday in which we run over each other, get in fights in the parking lot and beat people up trying to get something the day after we thank the Lord for all his blessings and the things that we have. Amen. Only in America. Amen. That's right. Some of y'all are laughing. Some of you are punching him. Some of you are saying, yeah, tell it, Brother Danny. I know, I know. I know. Our generation, we're so spoiled. I preached on it last Sunday morning. Good Lord. They, I mean, our generation of kids honestly thinks Moses was born in a real nice hospital and his mama put him in a daycare called Bull Rushes and Noah hired a contractor to build the ark and, uh, had, had, they, and had everything as a cruise ship, actually. And Noah just went on a cruise and and had all the and everything he wanted a buffet three times a day and had uh, all he wanted in there. And the children of Israel, they really stayed at the five-star motel uh, for 40 years every night out there in the wilderness and they even took vacations to the beach at least three times a year while they were out wandering 40 years in the wilderness and Jesus fed the 5,000 with a bucket of Kentucky Fried Chicken big as this church, you know, and biscuits and gravy and everything else. And the Last Supper, well, that was at Paula Dean. Uh, you know, and, and uh, everything was so fast. No, people, no. These people didn't have none of that stuff. They had none of that stuff. But God blessed him, and he turned around and thanked the Lord. Where's the nine? Where's the nine? Where's the nine when it's time to visit? Where's the nine when it's time to pray? He went to another guy's house, knocked on the door. This guy's name Blessed. Blessed. He was so blessed that he couldn't even come back and thank the Lord. The prosperity had fooled, destroyed him. He said, man, where was you at? Jesus healed 10 of us. I'm the only one that thanked him. Where was you? He said, my family wanted to take me out to eat. They're so glad I'm healed and glad I don't have leprosy. We're at this really nice restaurant. I'm, I'm telling you, it's a really nice place to eat. And we just, I mean, or I'd have been there. Or where was he that? Well, I went to the mall, and you know, I, I, I had to go to the mall, and get there. And it's been a while since I've been to the mall. And I know it's Sunday evening and everything, we have church on Sunday. But I just, I just like to go to the mall and walk around. And I, I say, really? Really? We are back thanking the Lord. I mean, you had leprosy, and you're healed, and the Lord had mercy. Why didn't you go to the mall Saturday? Well, I, I said, my son had a football game. And, and you know, Sunday evening, I like to watch football. That's my football day. That's my football day. Do you understand? He said, yeah, I understand. But my goodness, man, what about the Lord? He said, but what about my team? I said, your team don't even know you exist and don't care. And he said, but, but I, I'm, I've got to see my team. And, and thankful said, you can see all the highlights when you get home and you won't miss a blessed thing, lay out for the Super Bowl and everything else. I mean, you're like, the, you're like that woman that got mad because the government wouldn't pay for her Botox. Really, I mean, I mean, I'm fussing because uh, she couldn't get that added onto her plan uh, somehow or another. Amen. I mean, they rode four wheelers all evening on Sunday evening, and Lord, they took here and went there and went there and, and went there and went there. He said, "Where's the nine?" He went on 
from the next house. What's the guy's name? Mr. Phelan. Mr. Phelan. Where was you Sunday? We went back and thanked the Lord. Mr. Phelan said, I'll just be honest with you. I didn't ask him to be dishonest. Why do they always say that? Yeah. Why do people say, now preacher, I'm not going to lie. Not, I didn't, nobody said nothing about lying. <laughs> we don't go up and say, would you like to lie to me? <laughs> but that's what people always say. Now preacher, I ain't going to lie. What's the matter? Are you conscious bothering you? <laughs> I mean, uh, I mean, are you, what, what's, what's wrong? And, they said, and Mr. Phelan said this. He said, I don't know why, but I just don't feel it like I used to. Well, I mean, that day I got healed, I, I mean, I could feel the Lord, and I was so happy, but, you know, I, I don't know if it's the church or, or things have changed. I, I just don't... I, I just don't I, it just ain't the same. Honestly, I have to make myself get up and go. And the guy said... Well, look at your skin. He said, yeah, yeah, it's clean. He said, you know, the Lord done a lot for you. Yeah, I know, but I just don't. I, you know what? I don't want to be a hypocrite. I think if you have to make yourself go, there ain't no use in going anyway. Because your heart's not in it. Well, I think it'd be all right if you went ahead and thanked him, even if you didn't feel it. One guy said this, he said, uh, one guy said this, he said, I don't pay my tithes. He said, and he said, Mr. Phelan, he said, he said I, don't, I don't talk about giving and everything. I don't, I don't pay my tithes. I need my money. I don't make a lot of money. Let them people that make all that money pay theirs. I, I, I give to the church in other ways. And the guy said, well, we all do. We cut the grass and we pray for our meat and everything. But he's talking about your money, 10% of it belongs to God. And he said, well, I just... You know, don't it say the Lord loves the forgiver? He said, it sure does. And he said, well, so if I'm giving it grudgingly, I probably shouldn't give it, right? He said, uh, wrong. He said, you mean if my heart ain't really in it, I should still give it? He said, that's right, because that way it ain't but one sin. If you don't want to and don't do it, it's two sins. If you don't want to and do it, it's only one sin. Y'all are getting educated. You ought to see the eyes popping up in here. Oh, there went your excuse, didn't it? Hey, we're supposed to honor. Have, have, have I not ever preached this before? You're supposed to honor God, worship God, serve God, give, be faithful to the Lord, whether you feel it or not. You do right and serve God. It won't be long you'll be feeling something. Your feelings have nothing to do with it. Listen, a baby, you don't always, you don't always feel like a third grader. You know, when you're in third grade, you don't have a worry. You don't worry about the things in the world. You just, that's the way it is in a Christian life. When you first get saved, the Lord shields you from a lot of things. And you don't know about all the troubles and problems. And you don't have to deal with kids and, and bills and everything. And you just shout it out and have the victory. But then as you go by, the Lord lets you be a mature Christian. You realize there's problems in the world, problems in the church, problems in the home. And you go on and serve God like a mature adult. Not just because you don't feel like getting there one Sunday morning. Say amen right there. Listen, I don't always feel like preaching, but by the time I get good and going, I do. I have to, that's right. I don't always feel like reading my Bible. When well, God told him, he said, you know what? I, I know he gets up there and says, read your Bible through, read your Bible through. I, I get sick of hearing him say that. And thankful, said, why? Because you don't do it. No, I just think if you have to make yourself read five chapters, it don't do no good, so I just don't do it. Oh, so you're interested in doing good? Well, then... Uh, what good does it do not to read it? If you're worried about doing good, the guy said, I don't think it does no good if I have to make myself read the Bible. Oh, you're, so you're worried about doing good? What good's that doing not reading it? Yeah. I think you'd be better off to go ahead and read it, even if your heart ain't thrilled, than to uh, back off and be a hypocrite and say, well, since I don't want to, I, I, I'm not getting anything out of it, so it's not right for me to read it anyway. That's a crazy way to think. Yeah. Amen. That's right. Well, he said, it's only 10% the Lord tells you to give. And he did heal you from leprosy, you know. You wouldn't even have that job if he hadn't healed you. You wouldn't have a dime if he hadn't healed you from leprosy and get that job. 
I don't think 10% is too much. He said, you can live better on 90% of your income with the blessing of God on it who can turn uh, uh, loaves and fishes and feed 5,000 people. He can bless your 90% a lot more than you can 100 cheating and stealing and a guilty conscience all the time. <whistles> Lord have mercy, how many more of these guys are they? He went to the next house, Mr. Picky. The Pickies live here at this house. Old Nit, he's the daddy. How you doing, Nit? Where's Grouch? Uh, she's in there in the bed. Missed y'all church Sunday. Jesus healed you from leprosy. Where was you? Where you been? He said, I'll just be honest with you, dude. One of them guys that teach Sunday school up there said something I just didn't agree with. Yeah. Peter, James, John, one of them guys he's got up there with him. And I saw one of them singing in the choir and he, he, ain't no, he ain't a bit, he's a different person. He's a different person at church than he is at work. And uh, thankful said, yeah, I mean, I, I get all that, but where was you? Amen. Where was you? The Lord said, where's the nine? He said, well, I just, I just, there's so many things I see at church that I disagree with. And there's, and there's so many things, honestly, I, I just think I can worship God just as good here at home. Really. He said, I can't live right under him. You know, you can't live right. Jesus is your, is your preacher and you can't live right. I've heard people say, my pastor, he just, if I had a better pastor, you know what the Bible said about them people and the children of Israel in the wilderness? It said, uh, with many of them, God was not well pleased. And Moses was their pastor. <laughs> Moses was their pastor. Some of y'all couldn't live, some of you people, you wouldn't live right in heaven, Really? I mean, you'll backslap. I, the, I don't know what the Lord will do with you when you get there. I, listen, Lord, he's been good to us. We've got a good church. We've got a good fellowship. We've got his blessing on it. Tell you what's wrong with you. You're not thankful for what he's done for you. By the way, you want me to shorten this a little bit? You know why all them guys wasn't there? They didn't want to be. There's your answer. There's your answer. Next man, he went to his house. Tattlers live here. The Tattler family. There's his name. Tattlers. Gossip. Yak, yak, yak. Sister Flapper Jaws coming to the door. Her tongue would reach from here to the buses out there. She traded her vacuum cleaner in uh, for a telephone because she'd pick up a whole lot more dirt on, on all of the neighbors. And Miss Tattler said, Well, I don't think I'm coming back to that place. He said, well, Jesus said, where's the nine? Where was y'all? I ain't coming back. I've heard some stuff about them. Oh, really? I've heard some stuff about him. He claims to be the son of God. Well, you got to understand the scripture right now. Yeah but, yeah, but don't you think that's a little arrogant? Preacher claiming to be the son of God? I heard, I heard he spit on somebody. See there, they did just enough truth to mess them up. No, he did not spit on somebody. Well, I heard it. There was a man that lived my, she said, she said my next door's neighbor's cousin's ex-girlfriend's wife's best friend's brother's uh, neighbor said it. It's got to be true. <laughs> Saw it on Jerry Springer. And everything on there is the truth. And, and Michaela and all them people on TV. And I heard he spit on somebody. They said, you don't understand. A man was blind. The Lord made clay out of the spittle as a pitcher of the, and anointed his eyes. And he see, that's the truth of the story. Well, I still don't think. Well, you, you, you need to quit picking fault and finding fault. Well, my priest said that he told everybody to forsake the law of Moses. And I said, Thankful said, your priest is full of the devil because he's not telling nobody to forsake Moses. He fulfills the law and he is the fulfillment of the scripture. And he said, well, my priest said he th thinks it's all right to work on Sunday. Well, he said, he's healing people like he did you and there ain't nothing wrong with that and you need to come. Where the nine? Where the nine? Where the nine? He said, I heard he spit on somebody. No, he didn't. He healed them in their eyes. I heard he worked on Sunday or on, a Saturday, on Saturday. Number seven, he went to another guy's house. Offended. Hey, buddy. 
We were, where was you? We went back to thank the Lord. Where was you at? Well, I just, there's just some, I don't want to talk about it. That's what they always say. I don't want to talk about it. Why? I, I'm offended. I saw Peter's wife at the, at the Dollar General and she didn't even speak to me. Looked right at me. I know she saw me. And just turned and got her a little buggy and went on. I'm not coming back. Now, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Thankful said, now, look, look. Jesus healed you from leprosy. You had leprosy, now you ain't got no more. He, he, and you're not going to come back and thank him and worship him because you saw Peter's wife at the dollar store and she didn't speak to you. That's right. Hell, I'm offended. Preacher, I just got offended. And, and my wife... And, and my wife said that she wasn't going back. And, and you know, the Bible says we're supposed to make our wife happy. And you know, that verse of scripture, happy wife, happy life. And, and thankful said, you've been reading stupid seminars and sit your Bible. <laughs> Lord have mercy, there's so much truth coming in here this morning. Some of y'all about to OD on it. I, I'm, you're about ready to throw up. I'm telling you, brother, hey, hey. He said, well, I took our, our, took our two-year-old when we went to thank him. And, and one, that, you know that woman that sits right over there? In that, well, her, her baby grabbed mine and pinched him in the nursery. And I, I'm not going back to that place. He said, I'm just offended, just offended. He said, where's the nine? The next one knocked on the door. His name was Pleasure. Mr. Pleasure, where was you? We come back to thank the Lord. He said, well... Uh, can't we be thankful here at home? He said, well, you can, but Jesus wants to know where you're at. Jesus wants to know where you're at. Where's the nine? He said, don't judge me. He said, I'm not judging, I'm just telling you. Jesus, well, see, this movie just came out and I've been wanting to see it ever since they've been saying it's been coming out. And he said, look, you're wasting your money. It's the same old trash Hollywood always puts out. It ain't gonna help you spiritually. It's not gonna make you more spiritual. It's not gonna help your home. It's not gonna help your family. It's just gonna take your money and put dirty thoughts in your head. And he said, but I really want to see it. And it's got old so-and-so in it. And I like to watch him. And I stayed home the other night and watched the CMA Awards. And, and then I had something on MTV, I want to say. And they, and they said, well, where was you last week? And he said, I went to Gatlinburg. And he said, well, that place ain't even been discovered yet. Shut up. He said, you, I, I'll be way up hundreds of years from now. You're just making up junk. And pleasure said, I think I just didn't want to go. He said, you're unthankful. Lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God. Amen. The last man, I'm gonna call him tragic. He's number nine. Where are the nine? You know why I'm gonna call him tragic? Because when he got there, there's a wreath on the door where the tragics live. He said, his wife came to him and he said, where's tragic? He, she said, you he hadn't heard? We're getting ready to have his funeral here in the next day or two. And, he, and I said, he said, well, the Lord healed him. We looked for him. Why didn't he come back? He said, she said, you didn't read it in the paper. It's on, it on the news. He said, uh, he was coming up home the other day. And he, you know, the road was slick, and he was coming out there, and him, he was riding his that camel, and another guy come around him took camels hit head on killed him. He was texting. <laughs> You're learning tremendous truth these days. He was texting, trying to run that camel on that slick road, and wasn't watching where he's going, and hit another camel head on. Bam! He's gone. You know what? He said, you know, Mr. Thankful, we went in his room, found this poem that he wrote right before he died. Would you care to read it at his funeral? You think Jesus would mind preaching at his funeral and, and could we get a little help on our light bill? That just popped out. And preacher, would you read this at his funeral? After all, he really was a good man. 
They all are after they're dead. And he read this. The title was Where Were the Nine? And he said, I meant to go back. As you may guess, I was filled with joy I cannot express. My sores, my skin was so defiled and now I've become smooth and clean as a little child. I was filled with happiness, crazed with glee. The bright sunshine I could not see. But now all was bright where it had been black. I meant to go back. Oh, I meant to go back. I was going to go back when my family came out with tears of rejoicing and laughter and shout. They crowded around me and filled the place. They stared at my feet, my hands, and my face. My children were there and my dear sweet wife and all the enjoyments and fun of life. My cup was so full, I nothing did lack. I meant to go back. Oh, I meant to go back. Now learn a parable before it's too late. We now must ask, where are the eight? Because he's gone. Now people, I ain't fussing at you this morning, but I'm telling you, it's a good time of year to get your priorities straight. Yes put the Lord first in our own personal lives, in our family, and be thankful for what he's done for us. Amen? Amen. Let's stand by our head for prayer. Our heads are bowed. Our eyes are closed. Maybe you're here this morning and you're like the ten lepers needing to be cleansed. Maybe you're here this morning and, and you'll say, Brother Danny, I've never really even ever been saved. I want to be saved. I don't want to die and go to hell. I want to be saved. Maybe you need to come this morning. Maybe you're here this morning and you say, I've been saved, preacher, but my goodness, you're you plowing my row. And I need to get my life right with God this morning. We're going to pray and we're going to sing a little bit. It'd be a good time to get around this altar on the week, Sunday before Thanksgiving and just thank him for all his blessings. Father, I pray right now in Jesus' name, Holy Spirit of God, take these simple thoughts from the words of the Lord Jesus saying, where are the nine? And Lord, help us to get our priorities straight and right and make our church a blessing. Bless everybody here. Lord, I pray that you bless every single person in this place, every family, every man, every woman, boy, girl. Do what ought to be done right now, this morning. Help that one this morning that needs to step out and get their heart right. Come right now in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Come on right now. Why don't you just come right now, get out of your seat, make your way down here, and say, have your way, Lord. Come on right now. Join these on the altar. Mamas and daddies, husbands and wives, come right now. Amen. Amen. After that. Amen. Amen. So you men come pray with this young man. Amen. You let God speak your heart this morning, friend. You let God speak your heart this morning. Amen. Hallelujah. Come on, everybody, let's sing now. Have thine own. Let's just be thankful. Let's just be thankful this morning. Have thine own way. Amen. Be thankful. Be thankful this morning. Praise God. Amen. Master Hallelujah. Isn't that a blessing? Amen. Amen. Water than Amen. snow, Lord. Wash me just Wash now. Me just now. Amen. Just like a leper. As, As in thy prayer. Amen. I'll never forget that night. I went to him as a leper and he cleansed me. Amen. Don't be a, don't be one of the nine. Be like the one who came back and fell at his feet and thanked him. Amen. Come on. Come on right now. Come on right now. Help me, I pray. Amen, brother. Amen. Power all power. Amen. Hallelujah. Surely is thine. Amen, brother. Touch me and heal me. Amen. Amen. Y'all pray for this, young man. God bless you.
One more, brother. Let's sing one more. Have, have thine, thine own way, Lord. Lord. Amen. Have thine own way. Amen. Hold on my being. Absolute. Absolute. That's right. Sway. That's good advice. That's good advice. Fill with thy spirit. Amen. Till all shall see. Amen. Christ Amen. only always. Amen. He's living in me. All right. Thank the Lord. Yes. While he's still praying, uh, come on, sister. Jennifer come to join the church this morning. She's been coming to church here forever and just come to join. She works in the bus ministry and doing a great job. And so uh, we want to do that right quick this morning. She's been saved. She's been baptized. It's Jennifer McCracken. So someone make the motion. Second, all in favor, let me know an uplifted hand. Hallelujah. Amen. I want you to come around and give her the right hand of fellowship. She'll be a member of our church. And if you haven't yet joined the church, you need to. Get your heart right. That's the only requirement. Your heart's got to be right with God and you ought to be baptized or be willing to as soon as you can. And so um, uh, if you haven't done that, go ahead and make that step. Go ahead and make that step. Uh, you say, Lord, Mama, turn over in her grave. No, she wouldn't. She'd probably say, she'd probably shout. So uh, let's, uh, let's get that settled. Y'all be sure and shake her hand and don't miss tonight's service. Don't miss tonight's service. You know, I'm, I'm trying to get you to be thankful for what God's not, he's not mean, he's not a tyrant. It ain't, I don't go to church because I have to. Oh gosh, I don't go. I go to church because I want to. I want to be here. And I tell people that all the time, I want to go to church. You start thanking him for what he's done, you want to you come and pray, okay? All right, just stay right here. She's gonna play and you'll come around and give her the right hand of fellowship. Let's bow our head and be dismissed with a word of prayer. Uh, Brother Wayne, you dismiss us and everybody fellowship before you go. Six o'clock this evening.